Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on operating systems. This particular topic is in continuation with the system calls. So, FOX is the system call which is used under the process category. This can be used to create a process in traditional Unix and this newly created process gets a copy of the current program but it gets a new process PID. So, let me explain the concept first and then I will give you the demo program also. Normally, when we write a program in this manner, suppose if I am writing a simple program so as already i told you this fork will create what a duplicate process so now the current process which is the parent process and the newly created process which is called as the child process these two processes will run concurrently so when you execute this program you will get in the output the printf lines which whatever you have written two times one executed by the child process and another executed by the parent process but you may not get in the same sequence suppose uh, when you run the program you may get an output like this good morning good morning immediately one is executed by the child process the, uh, the other printf statement is executed by the parent process then you may get like this nice day nice day once again here this statement from the child process this statement from the parent process now when you see such output we are not sure that this statement is it from the parent process or from the child process this statement is it from the parent process or from the child process and the same program when you run again you may get a different sequence first you may get good morning then you may get a nice day then you may get once again nice day then good morning so this type of what this type of outputs you will be getting wherein the sequence will change every time you run the program because here not one program two programs are ex getting executed parallelly because of the fork system call fork has created what a duplicate process and that process is called as the child process one which created the child process is becoming now the parent process so the parent and the child both processes will run concurrently that is why in the output you will get different lines uh, um, sometimes uh, first from the parent and second from the child or a mix from both these processes so if at all we wanted to know which lines which output lines are exactly from the child process and which lines are exactly from the parent process for that we have a mechanism for will return a integer value and this value can be either a negative value or it can be a zero or positive value if it is a negative value it is an error if it is a zero then it is a child process suppose if it is a positive value then it is a parent process uh, so by checking the return value to the fork system call we can find out whether it is a parent process or child process or there is an error error here is what the child process has not got created at all so if like uh, suppose if you want to implement this in the C language you can use the if else ladder you can write down the return value okay suppose if i'm using variable r let me explain these things later not presently you just see that r is storing the return value to the folk system call if r is far is equal to negative uh, any negative value then you are uh, writing what error okay else if if r is equal to zero then it is a child process else it is a parent process so this way you can use the else if ladder statement in order to find out whether the output lines that got printed are from the child or from the parent so the same concept i'll try to explain with an example assume that the child process is created so we will check only whether the output lines are from the parent process or from the child process so for that i have a sample example here so what i have done is i have included this header files normally when we are writing the c program we always include stdio.h because in order to make use of the printf and the scanf statements now when you are making uh, the system calls in your program you include these header files also then we can write the program here i am declaring this r variable of pid underscore t you should use in the same manner pid underscore t is what it is a data type and it is a signed integer data type which is capable of representing the process id so normally whenever a process gets created the process will get a unique identifier and we call it as pid and this pid is stored in a process table so suppose if this is the process table first one 
program is there here whatever program is there that PID value will be included in the table now this process has created another process that child process the child process will also get a new PID and that PID will also get included like this the all the PIDs of all the processes that are created will be present in the process table this is one thing now I wanted to tell you that if at all you want to know the return value to the fork system call then first you have to declare a variable like this i am using the letter r anything can be used p q s t so but you have to make use of pid underscore t then the same variable so it will store what the return value to the fork now at this point we are checking whether the value r is equal to zero if it is zero i am using th these three printf statements wherein i am writing uh, hello everyone and I am a child process having a PID and you know this is the system call a, which will give you the PID of a process. So if R equal to 0 it is a child process. We know that return value to the fork if it is 0 it is a child process. So in this child process block I am writing three printf statement one is hello everyone another is it is printing the get PID also the child process will print its parent PID. So for that the function is get ppid okay so this way i am just trying to print the pid of the child process and also the pid of the parent process and one more statement hello everyone these three lines uh, these three lines will get printed when in if r equal to zero else so that means if r is a positive value then now these statements are written inside the block for the parent process the parent is printing here hello everyone my child PID is now look here the child PID I am writing what you cannot use now get PID to get the process ID of the child a process will get its PID but with get PID but if a process wants to know the PID of its child then it has to make use of this variable which we have declared here the return value because here this fork is a special system call for that I have written here few statements so that you can come to know the fork is a special system call you call it once but the function will return twice look here the statement you are calling it once but the function will return twice once in the parent and once in the child the return value is zero indicating that it is a child process but it returns the new PID value in the parent process so when the child gets created to indicate that it is a child process the return value is equal to zero this is what will come to know that it is a child process but the return value in the parent process will be what the PID value so this R here will give the PID of the child process now the parent also wants to know its PID so it can use this function call get PID see now you can check the complete program what does it have this is the declaration part then here if R equal to 0 these statements if it is a child process and then next else if it is a parent process so once you execute this you will get an output like this in the output fine you will get like this hello everyone I am just printing like this this statement okay from this if category that is if from the child process then it will print because both are running now concurrently because of the fork system call the child and the parent both will run concurrently lines from both these blocks will get printed but not in a proper sequence one sentence may be from the child process one from the parent process like now suppose if i am writing like this my child's pid is so it will print the pid suppose if i am taking the example as five six seven one is the child's pid then my pid is or i can write down like this my parent pid is 3742 so what I am doing here is I am just trying to print the statements from both parent and the child process so first statement from this child process hello everyone I have printed next my child's PID I am printing this line so I am just giving randomly some PID number 5671 then I will my parent PID one line from this so I am printing here the parent PID 3742 then next I'll print hello everyone this statement from the parent process okay this one then next I'll print my PIDs now this is from the parent process 3742 then one more so this we have completed now one more statement I am a child process having PID 
this line i am a child process having pid pid equal to 5671 now what you have observed is three statements were from the child actually in the program and three statements were from the parent now the six statements got printed here fine so we can come to know that yes hello everyone hello everyone though this is printed the same sentence is used in both child and the parent will not come to know whether this sentence is from the parent process or from the child process my child's pid is so this statement is present here the parent statement is selected here this child statement is selected here then this is one more statement hello everyone which we don't know whether it is from the parent or the child then my pid the statement from the parent process is selected here and the statement from the child process is selected 5671 so that means the child pid is 5671 and the parent pid is 3742 fine now what exactly we uh, wanted to see here is why this output is having lines mixed from both parent and the child process we don't want this thing to happen we want first statements from one process and then all statements from another process for that we have to make use of another system called and that is called as the wait system call so wait system call i'll just give you little introduction about the wait system call then i'll show you the demo program wait system call so this things now you came to know the child process terminates with an exit zero yeah this i wanted to tell you this exit zero is exit is also another system call the child after completing its pro task it will terminate with what status with the exit zero and this zero is the exit status of the program the parent process need to pick the exit status of the child and for this we need a new system call and it is called as the wait system call so wait will not allow the execution of the parent process until the child terminates so this sentence you just see wait will not allow the execution of the parent process until the child terminates so now our problem will be solved this output whatever we got a mix of both from the parent and the child process now we can get output wherein we'll get first lines from the child processes then all the lines from the parent process for that what modification you are supposed to do in this existing program only what i'll do is this wait system call has to be used in the parent block so i can introduce now the wait here you can check where did i introduce else first start with this wait system call and then print all the statements pertaining to the parent so wait will take a argument and that has to be null so include that argument also wait now when you execute the program the output will be first these three lines will get executed okay completely the child process will get executed and next to all the lines from the parent process will get executed so wait is actually carrying out this job wait will not allow the execution of the parent process until the child process terminates so once you execute this in the output you will get first all lines from the child process and then next all lines from the parent process so this is how wait system call is used in the program and this is also very much required here because in the process table which got created the pid of the parent process was there the pid of the child process was there in the process table like this the pid of all other processes will be there if wait system call is used in the program when the fork is used the parent process and the child process executed okay the child process after executing it has to return the exit status and the exit status once it is returned to the parent process the parent will take the exit status of the child process which is the pid and it will delete the entry from the process table suppose if the entry is not deleted that means the exit status is not returned to the parent and when is the exit status not returned to the parent when the parent is not making use of the wait system call if it is not making use of the wait system call simply the child will complete its execution and it will terminate once it terminates its, its task is over but its pid still remains in the process table so but this pid value should be actually taken away from this process table it has to be erased from the process table because the operating system has allotted the resources to the child process or the resources of the child were actually shared from the parent process only if pid entry is not deleted from the process table it will be assumed that it is still allocated to the child process but the child process has actually terminated and it has completed its execution so if 
if the entry is not deleted the child process entry if it is not deleted then that process becomes a zombie process zombie process is like a dead process but still its entry is there in the process table it is a kind of live process also so this should not happen otherwise all processes which creates the child processes will continue uh, leaving the pids in the process table if they are not making use of the wait system call hence make use of the wait system call in the in the parent block here so that the parent process will wait until the child executes and then the parent will start its task so this is how the wait system call can be used in the program so i'll tell few more lines about the wait now i think it will make sense if you read this statement the child terminates with an exit zero zero is the exit status of the program the parent process need to pick up the exit status of the child and for this we need a new system call and it is called as the wait system call so wait will not allow the execution of the parent process until the child terminates so hope now you got to know the purpose of including the wait system call in the program and if you find this session useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care